to do with the business is. It is another week in the books with the On Deck TV show. I am Spike Lou. Man, how did your boy Animal Brown, Animal underscore Brown, if you're looking for me on socials? Absolutely. I am Spike Lou on them same social sites. So holla at your boy, boy. AB, how you doing out there? Man, I cannot complain. It's trying to stay out this hot ass weather down here. We're, I'm ready for the fall, man. It's, it's turning. You like the sixth person that I've heard say that they ready for the fall. It's real. We can smell it. Is the it. fall the best season? Is that the best season? Mm. Fall up there. All the good sports. Top two. You rock your good gear. Fall is like, fall is elite. I'll give you that. Fall, yeah. Now, fall, it ain't too hot. It ain't too cold. It's right. Like, it's comfortable. You can put a hoodie on and be straight for the Facts. whole day. Facts. And I'm getting into uh, me and Derb. Shout out to guy Derb. My we went out and played uh we went to the driving range so the fall actually is a better time for golf because it'll be hot as fuck exactly you still get a little breeze so i look forward to getting a lot of golf in he and i actually are going out this saturday man so i look forward to that yeah man shout out to my guy Derb. Thanks. um hey man action-packed episode coming up guys um murder inc doc debut jay-z explained why the murder inc group failed 50 had some very interesting comments regarding his uh, G-Unit counterparts on The Breakfast Club and the game's long-awaited Drillmatic double album, 30-plus tracks, finally releases. We're going to break that down and see what we feel about that. But first, yo boy, Kevin Gates, receives backlash while he was on DJ Academics podcast, doubling down on his Black Lives Matter comments. He says he can't stand Black Lives Matter. He doesn't believe in it. Gave several reasons, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, he called criticism for it. But my question is, is the criticisms fair or foul? Great question. Absolutely, the criticisms are fair. Uh, Kevin Gates gets accused a lot of what we call in the streets is jailhouse knowledge. Niggas go in jail, they read a lot of books, and they come out talking a whole lot of shit and acting like they smarter than what they actually are. The thing about what Kevin Gates says is he ain't got to be wrong, but he's a multi-platinum, a whole lot of streaming, very popular artist. So there's a thing, guy, that you and I listen to sometimes, Tariq Nasheed, where he talks about being on code. For sure. And it's cool for Kevin Gates to have this conversation with his manager backstage with him and his homeboys and hey man this is how I feel and this is the approach that I take to fixing it but when you get on academic shit and it get floated all around and motherfuckers well and you are talking about why well, I hate black lives matter it make it way more palatable for the motherfuckers that do not have good intentions that really do not like black lives matter like you saying because he ain't speaking of oh I'm offended by it. he is speaking of a place of pardon my French all lives matter Right. However, the people who have malice behind when they say that, I don't think Kevin Gates does, they can see this, point at it and say, hey, yeah, this is right. Even one of your own popular, thugged out, violent, raiding rappers says the same thing. Why don't you agree? And then that offers credence to that bullshit ass argument that people come and say when they say all lives matter. We understand right. that. So. To say uh, it's definitely dumb, ignorant to say that aloud. He can feel that way. I'm not here to police his feelings, but I do think that it's very irresponsible to get on several platforms and say this is how you feel without offering some type of suggestion to fix it. Yeah, he um, the criticisms are fair. Um, he, he said, uh, quote, we kill each other all day. We talk about each other all day. You know who talk about me the most on the Internet? Niggas. You know what's worse than a nigga? Two of them. <laughs> he said he doesn't see color. Um, he just sees who's real and who's fake. Uh, all right. So here's the thing about the Black Lives Matter stuff that people always like to do, and it, it really gets on my nerves. For Kevin Gates to be so smart, um, he's leaving Yo, nuance smart. and context completely out of the statement, which is what is, is extremely important <laughs> when you're talking about this particular statement which we all know was in response to a specific thing. It is not necessarily to be, people like to generalize it and then flip it to black on black crime or whoever's in his comments or cater it to whatever it is that how they want to skew it. And that takes it completely out of context. And I hate when people do that. I hate when people fall for it. It's even worse. 
Um, I, the follow-up question should have been when he said, you want to know who talk about me on the internet in my comments? Niggas. Okay, then cool. Who's in your comments giving you the most love? Answer that then. Who giving you the most props in your comments, bro? If it's niggas that's doing all the hating, who's giving all the love? Mm. Lie and say it ain't niggas, bro. <laughs> like, just, like, please, for me. That should have been the follow-up question, but Ak is Ak, and so he didn't. he's not here for that. He's here for the clip of him saying what he said. That's perfectly fine. But I, I, I just hate when people drag and take one thing in this box over here as it relates to police brutality, which is where that came from, and then try to pull it into a completely other conversation on this side so that they, and they try to bridge that gap and make it make sense. And it just, I, I hate when people do that. When yeah, it's two separate it's, issues. It is definitely two separate issues. And again, like you saying, trying to clump the two in clearly avoids having to address the other one. And that's right. what Kevin Gates, I feel like has fallen a victim to trying to be too smart. Right. Bro, come on. Bro. You're just doing too much. And again, if you're going to have that conversation, keep it in house. You ain't got to have that conversation in front of a million podcast listeners, bro. I think he does it just for the clicks. And so his music can stay popular. He's very good at, um, what is controversial statements, whether yeah, he's sure. saying he's sticking his tongue up some woman ass or whatever yeah. it may be. Or he started he, somebody's car with his bare hands. With his bare hands without yeah. anything else. So he definitely going to be able to get those type of statements out there and have people react to him. I guess that's why he's still selling records, because I ain't really heard his music. Yeah, I, I listened to a little bit of the last one, but it's not. He doesn't have anything commercial that's popping, but. Uh, he still definitely got his fan base, though. He he, he has a lot of fans. Yeah. You know, a whole lot of fans. I love for him to sit down in front of a real interviewer other than act and get really into that, how he feels about that Black Lives Matter. Because I think I can good, challenge him. Yeah, I think a good interviewer could back him into a corner where he comes off of that. I really I do agree. A, an average interviewer could do that. Yeah, I agree. 100%. <laughs> Speaking of average, your man's 50 cents. <laughs> He's been carrying his weight around doing promo because power uh, Canaan season is back. Yep. In one of the interviews recently, he says when asked about a G unit reunion, I am done carrying G unit in quote, animal Brown 2022. <laughs> if you are Tony Yayo or Lloyd Banks, how do you feel about 50 saying he's done? carrying G unit. Those are two different answers because one of them still talks to 50. The other one does not. They'll fall still out. talk to him. Yayo still talk to him. Oh, wow. They're still close. Yayo just got off tour with him overseas um, mm. not too long ago. So they're, they're on the they're, uh, they're, they're like a roller coaster. Their relationship. Uh, 50 explained it himself on Breakfast Club, which is actually a really good interview. I suggest y'all check that out. 50 normally does good interviews. He's usually pretty insightful. And he thinks about he thinks of things and sees things in a different way without coming off as the smartest person in the room like Kevin Gates sometimes does. Um, so I suggest checking that out. Um, he said that Banks, I mean, excuse me, Yayo will fuck up, but then come back and be like, all right, my bad, I'm my fault, but I fucked up. You know what I'm saying? And then and then they'll go and work about their they issues and go about their day. Banks, on the other hand, will just I, I don't know. They fell off and then Banks is kind of depending on who's telling the story is ego or is whatever the pride, who knows? So he may feel differently about this statement, but Yayo agrees though. Yayo, Yayo is on record saying 50 is up here. The rest of June is down here. Like, let's be realistic. Like he kind of knows his quote unquote place and mm. he knows why he, where he's in, why he's in the position that he's in. It's because of 50. Like mm. everybody knows that bro. Yayo not rapping on his own dolo without fifth. Like mm -hmm. that's his man's. He put him on. This is how clicks. It just happens all the time, man. It, it just it's this is not a surprise. He carried G Unit. He tried to tell niggas how to do shit. Some of them listened. Most of them didn't. And then that look where they're at and look where he at. So that's how that's how you judge that. And that's how you judge it. I judge it totally <laughs> different from that. And there's this thing that the reason that I feel the way I do about Fifty, he's got a great business acumen, like you said. The videos are entertaining, but he likes to punch down from my view of what I say. And when I say punch down, I mean the situation with Buck. I mean the the, the jabs he take it, Diddy, the, like the consistent punching <laughs> down to people that he feel like ain't in the position. He tried that shit with Ross. He's tried it with Game. He's done it throughout sure. his career. Now, 
these niggas, you said something key there in your monologue. These niggas are supposed to be his homeboys. So I never understand how you talking about your homeboys and you're like, well, I ain't carrying them niggas. Because to me, it seems like, well, you was from the beginning. They, these ain't never been your homies. Because if it comes up where my homeboys can eat, and regardless if they listen to me or not, I'm not their dad. I'm their friend. So you can make a mistake. You can go do your own thing. And you cannot be as successful as I am. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to go shun you and be like, see, nigga, you should have listened to me. You'll be over here eating good. That's petty to me. That ain't what a homeboy would do, in my opinion. He may look at it totally clearly being from Queens. To me, though, a homeboy would be like, "Okay, y'all trying to get some bread. They offering me this money. I don't give a fuck about part. We ain't got no personal beef to where you did something to me. Well, I would exclude you from some money. So if you telling me just because a nigga didn't do what I said, and he would be in, be in a better position business-wise, and I'm holding that against my friend, that's petty. I can never get behind that because that goes against everything that you was pushing in the beginning as far as G-Unit, these my brothers, I'm putting my brothers on. Continue to let them eat. Who cares if they made mistakes? People are not perfect, dude. They're not going to do everything that you want them to do. It would be a great world if they did, and you guys would have made a fuck, fuck ton more money. Yep. But that just wasn't the case. Why, if you are their friend, are you continuously holding it against them? Yeah, 50, 50 is a petty dude. We've learned that That's nuts, uh, over man. and over and over again. He has showed that he doesn't he obviously doesn't care about about that piece of it. Um, I, I, The thing that Yayo explained was so difficult with working with 50 was that dude, his work ethic is on 20. And if yours isn't matching that, then he looks at you like you're lazy. And so, like, it's just like if you can't keep up, then he's going he's going to look down on you. And so, like, that that's where and that's that's why you see people like Jordan, like Jordan can't really coach. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's why it's hard for people like that to coach and do certain things, because they expect their expectations are unrealistic because they were able to do it. And it's like, nigga, like you different. Jordan, Mike, you different, my nigga. Like Kobe, Kobe, you're different, bro. Like every you can't expect some niggas can be great and not have them same um work ethics and all this like Shaq never worked out Shaq yeah. never went to practice like I mean you know what I mean not look at AI at practice the fuck for what That's true. like but everybody can't do that and Kobe and niggas like 50 understand that and so they try to make it easy on them and and pave the way some people follow some people don't Bank, uh, Yale follow Banks didn't right and in in a sense you have a point because with Jordan these niggas are my teammates and the reason that I look at 50 differently from doing this, these niggas is supposed to be your friends. Like this ain't Rick Ross. This ain't game. This ain't a nigga that was forced upon you that they may say G unit. These are niggas that you came up with. So while you do have a point, everybody ain't got what 50 got. Accepting yeah, that though, and still being like, all right, my nigga, come on, let's, let's make some, I know you made a mistake, but let's make, that's what friendship more so was about. That's the part that always baffles me about it. Like you can't be this way and this callous to everybody. A nigga asked you about some niggas that you made millions of dollars with, and they ain't done nothing to you personally. Niggas ain't fucked your wife. They ain't stole no money from you. So when you asking, Hey, would you get money with them again? Why wouldn't I, if I fuck with these niggas? Yeah, they made some mistakes. Yeah, they. I may not agree with the business shit that they made, but I ain't got no personal vendettas against them. So I just don't understand that type of pettiness. I do understand what you say with Jordan and Kobe because those people are assigned to them. Like y'all niggas here getting paid just like I am. Why ain't y'all performing as hard in the sense of we on the same team? But if these are my friends, my homeboys, and I guess that's why it's hard to do business with your friends and start businesses with your friends because of the expectations and separating the two. So Yeah. That's where it gets tricky. And 50, 50 interesting, man. Like he, he's, he's one of those dudes that's petty and is going to go out of his way to remind people. Like I told yeah. you so. And he's a shit. different nigga, bro. Like we, everybody know that it, it ain't no cool. getting to the age. He getting to the age now where that shit start catching up with you. Like it's shit all funny and games until you get to like 45, 46 and you looking up and ain't nobody fucking around. Don't nobody want to fucking deal with you. Like you ain't got no friends no more. You got all the money in the world. Like all of that shit cool until this part of his life that he got about to get to right now. Like who is we'll 50, see how it play out? Who is 50 friend? Right. Yeah, exactly. Like who he don't <laughs> name drop at least like Jay name drop Tata. Yeah, and like like <laughs> I don't know who 50 friend. I've never like he and he might, we might just not know, but like yeah, saying, like I don't see it. I ain't never seen like nigga petty with everybody. Yeah, facts. So.
That nigga talking about we cool, me and Puff cool, and he when yeah, nigga out talking about Puff is like if, if that's your cool, we talking about me and Jay cool. Like obviously Beyonce didn't think when she jumped down on you, my nigga. Like, come on. That's what I'm saying. Like at some point in time, like that shit, like at this age, the twilight years, bro. Like it seems like he would see a shift in his mindset. That Honestly, story was I, funny too. <laughs> it was. It was. Pitty a funny dude, man. Yeah, he is. He, he was saying he was saying some shit on there. Um man, uh it, again, check that interview because he broke down why he didn't sign Cole. He broke down why he didn't sign to Puff. He like it, it, it's some good shit in there. We talked about that. On the last episode, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but speaking of Jay, um, Jay made a cameo feature on the Murder Inc. BET documentary that debuted or premiered last week. Again, if you've been under a rock, it's the same thing as like the Rough Riders and the No Limit. You know what I mean? It's just Murder Inc.'s time. Jay Z was on there. Yeah, Jay was on there. I don't believe that. Yep. Yeah, Jay uh Jay blamed ego and ambition for the failed Murder Inc. group that consisted of he him. Uh, ja Rule and DMX. Uh, my question is simple. Could a super group of that magnitude work in 2022? Absolutely not. Uh, because it's not as much about the music anymore. When it was DMX, Ja Rule, and Jay, as it was supposed to be, people were fantasizing about the bars. Oh my God, wait till Jay and DMX do an album together and they got this many songs and Ja Rule doing a hook. People was fantasizing about that part of it. Now it's more so of a business. Now it's more so less about the music and more so about the brands. You brought up a good word there in the introduction is ego. A lot of ego being forced into the same room may work for a project, may work for a single, but in today's time, it's not going to work for a brand. We see it. It's not even a super group. And let's say, for instance, the City Girls. JT in Young Miami just had an interview about her doing one thing and young Miami doing the other thing. And is it going to be a rift in the group? Look at Migos. No. Yeah. Look at the Migos. That's more of a super group. You're right. But even on a smaller scale of just the city girls, opportunities start presenting themselves in today's game outside of rap a lot quicker and individually too. Like it ain't, I need the whole group over here. It's I want Miami to come host this show. Yep. And you have to be able to take advantage of that because you don't know how long you're going to be hot in today's game. The trends are faster. So taking advantage of the opportunities, I feel like, will drive a lot of groups, especially a super group, apart. Look at um Slaughterhouse. Hey, that was going to be my number one, bro. We tried this. Not to say that Slaughterhouse was, was Jay-Z, X, and Ja Rule. Let's be very clear. But those were solo acts that were asked to form a group that crashed and burned, failed miserably um, for a myriad of reasons. And one of which, exactly what you said, brands come out, opportunities come out for one and not the other. The Migos are literally family and we don't know what's going on with them right now. And it, so it, it's like, dude, it, it's a shame. The closest you're going to get is like a, a, a one project with two niggas, bro. You can get Jay and Kanye to do Watch the Throne one time. <laughs> right. Can, you could get a Drake and Future to do something one time, nigga, and, and we're probably lucky to even get those. And ain't no telling what had to happen behind the scenes for that to make that shit happen. Even though niggas is a little more clicked up now, it's kind of like the NBA. Like niggas at each other's weddings, and nigga, Bird was not at Magic's in anything, nigga. Like right, back right, in the day, right. that shit wasn't happening. Now it's, it's, it's still competitive, but people are more cool outside the booth. And it's still not going to happen. Like, you'll get two. You'll get a little one piece with two people in it, bro. Max, nigga. You're not, we're not getting black hippie. Put that to bed. I don't even, I can't even think of a rumored one since. So it, it sucks. I'd be here for it, but it'll never happen, though. Groups don't even exist no more, bro. The really Migos don't. the and last ones left. Like, I mean, there's really no incentive. Because if I'm a big artist, if I'm Drake, well, uh, not Drake. Yeah, if I'm a big artist, period, like if I was the baby and okay. the motherfucker called me and they was like, hey, man, let's start a group. Me, you, such and such, such and such. I'm going to be like, nigga, I'm already platinum Grammy and I'm doing this shit dolo. Why on earth? I don't need your followers. I don't need your listeners. I don't need your fan base. Usually with a group, you have people where it's split off that way. So I guess just individual acts are too big now. I don't see it. It just sound cool. Like it, it sounds, sounds like it would be fun. Sounds like a fun project. You're right. But Boys in the Hood was probably the last. And even then, like you we didn't know Jeezy who got out of there. That's a gym. 
I got me fucked up, man. I ain't finna be with the y'all. I got me f- who, what? No it's man, a, bitch. It's always gonna be levels. There, there'll be right. a Diana Ross or a Beyonce. Play. Look at shit. Look at Gorilla. She That's didn't even true. make it past one song with them other chicks, and they already signed it off. And we got our own deals with QC. Like, yeah. golly. That's true. <laughs> Shit. What? The vultures, they come in the plug. Vultures niggas, come. Bro. Well, who is that nigga in the back back there? That's the ratchet nigga. Let's sign him. Crazy, man. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it would be cool, but eh, it ain't going to happen. Yeah, it would be a, a pipe dream for us hip hop fans of 2022. Before we get into our review of the game's Drillmatic, his latest effort and a stellar uh, inventory of albums that he has, BET dropped a list of the top 25 hip hop moments that moved the culture forward. This is a pretty dope list, AB. As you browse through it, what stuck out to you and what's your moment that moved the culture forward? Man, you already know one of the biggest ones on here and it's a layup. It's the South got something to say. Yes. Um, 95, bro. Like we know exactly what that was. East Coast, West Coast, this, that. Outcast getting booed at MSG. At the Source Awards, <laughs> nigga, this was a this was a classic, legendary moment. Um, that that's one of the ones that's on this list that stood out to me. Um, but like you said, this was a really dope list, though. There's a couple on here that I'm like, eh, I don't know it was about reaches. that. A couple of reaches, yeah, a couple of reaches. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, this was relatively accurate. The second one that jumped out was the Kendrick uh, Control verse um that was 2013 it's almost been 10 years which is insane um if you remember that was on big sean's hall of fame album that was kind of some slaw and niggas don't even remember who all else was on that song but then it really didn't matter because kendrick stole the show that was his like i've arrived moment so that was they definitely got those two right for show facts uh for me Everything on this list, I agree with, was dope. But maybe one or two misses, but for the most part, I agree with all of those. The one that I didn't see on here, probably because it was more recent and probably the biggest one for me, uh, even with all that scene, was the Super Bowl recently. All the hip-hop Ooh. Super Bowl show, yeah. Dre, M, 50, to have it talked about and, and as critically acclaimed as it was. I know there was a point in time when you and I were listening to rap music that you couldn't have ever imagined wow. dr dre at a halftime super bowl show and for that to be every artist under his tree damn near coming out and doing it that shit is gonna go for a long time you got other genres like well country music artists won't they own super bowl now and pop artists as if they haven't had it for right. previous 50 super bowls <laughs> however that moment right there will be the only one that wasn't on there that i think has really stood out to me in recent in history yeah, that had to be on here. Uh, they nice. dropped the ball with that. And it was in L.A. too. Like, it was just, yeah. it was. It was everything lined up. Only thing that was missing was game. <laughs> That's true. But what would he have done? <laughs> I'm just joking. Oh, yeah, I'm about to say, see, like, what? I didn't want to see game. They, game said he'd been looking for Eminem since that Super Bowl. Andre. Yeah, he, he, he just. Call it. He just trying to build up some buzz for this project. Real quick, though, 3-6 winning the Oscar was super dope. Fire. Um, that was another good one. Lauren Hill with the with the infamous picture where she holding up all the, <laughs> the Grammys oh, and shit. Like Grammys like that. That it's, was that's dope. a dope list, man. Y'all go to the BET.com. The BET.com. I sound like an old person. Y'all go to BET.com. <laughs> www. <laughs> HTTPS dash dash. Hey, I see one over here. Uh, Hip hop fashion where Carl Kanai, FUBU, mm. Dapper Dan. Man, and I seen uh, LL tell a story. Did you see the the thing he did on um when he had that Gap deal when he had that Gap commercial back in the day? I don't know if you remember that. Shit. I, I remember this, this commercial. Nigga, you know he had yeah. the Fubu hat on in the had commercial. Had the Fubu hat to it, yeah. The nigga, because he said he said he hit. went to the meeting and they, and they were downplaying the. They were like, yeah, do that little like do the little hip hop thing. Y'all be the little rabbit right there. You be doing, yeah, that's cool. Just do that. He yeah. was like, man, you got me fucked up. So he was like, hey, I gotta wear a hat, man. My head shape fucked up. I always wear a hat. It was like, all right. Man, they spent. He said they spent twenty million on that commercial, dude. And he wore the Fubu Man. and included it in the lyric. He said the for us, by us, da da da. Man, dude, Blew nigga, him it took up. them like six weeks to peep and nigga to take it off the air. Nigga, I said that that was genius. Facts. And Damon said they wasn't ready for that at all. Like Damon tell the birds into that story of how everything hit once that came, like the oil is being backed up and shit. Yeah, that's that's dope. That's a dope ass inside the story right there. <laughs> um, hey man, speaking of the Damon game, John, the owner of Fubu. By the way, absolutely. Um, somebody like you do it on Shark Tank. 
Yes, yes. man. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Um, the album review, man. The game, Drillmatic, his 10th, if I'm not mistaken. You got a dime out here, man. The game, double album, 30 tracks. You know how we get down, man. Initial thoughts, highlights, lowlights, and then we'll give a final rating. But first, what were your expectations going into this very long ass album? Even though I appreciated the last game album, I did not understand the hype. I didn't understand niggas saying that game was coming out. I didn't understand people saying they were getting ready to review it. I, I just did not get it. The anticipation for game. I saw him making his rounds with these crazy accusations and all this outrageous shit that he wanted to talk about to mark his album up. But never did I once say, oh, shit, that Drillmatic is coming out. I can't wait to hear this. Game is one of the most exceptional artists of our time. Oh, man, let's go. 30 tracks. Oh, shit, this is going to be great. That was never my thought process. I just I, I didn't know. I was kind of confused as to why it was getting so much anticipation even though game makes good albums in my yeah. mind he was done he was washed up so i couldn't like he was garnering a whole lot more anticipation than i thought that he would have mm. that's why i was in anticipation for it i'm here for the good music because again i know he can make good albums but i just didn't understand why it was getting so much why it was bubbling so much when other artists you know usually don't get that at this point in time in their careers yeah what about you it was it was all about him, and he he did a good job of building up a buzz for himself. I give him that. He would take to the listening parties and have people talking about it was the greatest album of X, Y, and Z album of the year. Had Hit Boy, Hit Boy been on the roll, we know that, and so he in the studio co-signing it. We thinking he working with Hit Boy. We not sure if it's going to be twelve of them Hit Boy thing. Like we don't know. We don't know what it's going to be. He had the single earlier this year with Kanye, which was kind of dope. With the easy, that shit was kind of hard. I was like, okay, like. That sound good. Like, let's see what else going, what it's going to do. And then it gets pushed back and delayed and the buzz kind of dies down a little bit. And then he comes back out dissing Eminem, which is, I, I still, I'm still not hundred percent sure what that's about. He doesn't know. I don't know. You don't know. He just, he just trying to build up a buzz. I respect it. Nah, that's strange. Cause he tried the same shit with Kanye on that one around. He repping for the culture. I respect it. He tried to Man. diss Kanye on the Born to Rap, talking about he fucked him. And we was all like, dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, he was like, why are you saying it? What are you, what? Nobody, bro, nobody cares, dog. Like, it, 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 you sound weird. You talking about a nigga white, bro. You look weird, bro. Like, <laughs> it's, it's just, sure. you're trying to sell an album, and that's a very strange way of doing it. Um, but when the track list came out, I will say I, I was intrigued by the track list. Everybody who's ever rapped in 2022 is on here. Um, so some motherfuckers that rapped in 90, 92 on this motherfucker. So I was interest, intrigued in that, even though it did look a little overkill. 30 is 30. That's a lot. It's um, scary. That's that's a scary, scary. number of songs, yeah, yeah. dude. Um, scary hours. But when you when you finally did hit play and it dropped, what you what did you think initially? Game of rapping ass nigga, man. Even if like you, like I said, I was expecting it to be good because he usually puts out good albums. The game ain't got, he ain't got a many. slow album, bro. He ain't got that many bad albums. But no. as I start going through this, you get the Ice T joint straight out the door, then you get Fabio hit you, then you get that voodoo. And I'm listening and I ain't skipping nothing. I'm like, oh shit. Like all of the songs as I'm riding through, they they were good songs. The game was rapping his ass off. It had themes to it. Um, yeah. it was entertaining. He kind of like tapped into culture, giving commentary. It was like the perfect album for our generation. This is like rap how we remembered it. It feels like that he studied a lot of hip hop albums and took some of his favorite songs or themes from his favorite songs and put them on this album, which is why yeah. you got 30 of them. Yeah. So as I'm going through it, man, I was just more and more impressed as I continue to get through it with all the features making sense, all of it sounding good, it being as entertaining as it was. And I'm thinking at this stage in my career, I'm like, in his career, I'm like, damn, there, it, it really ain't another person in his age group that can do the 30 with the features on here and it still sound like this. It would sound like reaching anyone else. Yeah. Like Gotti is cool. It was good, but it ain't this high quality of rapping. That's true. Like it was just more so like this. Okay, this is what Yo Gotti do. I respect it. 
this right here is still high quality rapping on 30 tracks. So I walked away from it like, now I'm I'm super, super impressed by this. Yeah. How did you feel about it when you got known? Yeah, I, I felt the same way listening to it early on, man. I was, I was, I know we was in a group chat kind of like, hey man, this game, all right. Like you, I'm like, I'm on number six and I'm, I'm on number 12 and I'm, yeah, I'm on number 17 and I'm kind of fucking with this though on the low. Um, I will say once I had a chance to kind of go back and listen to it and listen to it a little bit more in depth, there was a couple that were okay. Like I, the first listen to me was the best listen so far. Um, but that's, that's not to say it tailed off a lot, but I'm just saying when, when I went back and listened, I was like, okay, like this one was just okay. And this one was just okay. But then the initial listen, it flowed very well in my opinion. Um, and I, I want a lot of cheat codes, a lot of cheat codes, but I, I didn't, I wasn't mad at them though, because let's be honest game is a cheat code with his name dropping, um, his, he, he's pretty much a chameleon, man. He switches his voice up on some show, on some of the records. He's always done that. And so he's, we've always kind of looked at him and expected him to do so. So when he comes out here with the bone sample and the Tila sample and the money cash hole sample, and the, I'm not surprised, but they worked though, in my opinion, I, I it's different from, cause Khaled had a bunch of sa- on samples on his land. We were like, bro, like what the fuck dude? Like, cause they didn't work. Many of them no, didn't work. It sounded lazy. Yeah. Though, yeah. I, I didn't like those. They just, you roll the dice, you try to flip something. It didn't work. He flipped these. And I was like, bro, like Wayne well, ripping this though. Like I'm kind of fucking with it. I kind of like when the B switch, when they said Rocky came on, I was like, that's kind of hard. So like, yeah, I wasn't mad at it. I was feeling it at first. I'm not going to lie. I think with Cali, it's almost like people take it like, well, what did you do, bro? The beat was already out here. We already knew these niggas could rap. And so I ain't like, what the fuck we need you for? Like, <laughs> why Why are you here, bro? What are you, what, what's your man's doing? I yeah. think that's how, but with game, you're right, though. It was more so refreshing. Like, I like the money, cash. Oh, like, game, I did. Ripping I did. it on there, like, the the what I was most impressed by getting into that like the remake uh, and the like the updated version of Stan and the that Eminem, was hard. quote unquote this that shit was fire I thought that shit was and dope it's it's the like, second half when he get in the ex. car yeah, yeah like it wasn't that. even <laughs> it wasn't even no corny diss and shit this was just like some hip hop like I'm yeah. fucking with it like it was dope he like was I don't ripping. care if Eminem don't like it or not like I I respect. <laughs> how he was just like throughout this album though it was like i'm just gonna say whatever the fuck i want to i've been doing this shit for 20 years y'all motherfuckers can't fuck with me i know i can rap i'm gonna spend a lot of money on these features and these samples and put out a dope ass project like again you said as i got to 12 15 17 i'm like damn man, all of this shit sound good like it was this nigga got 30 tracks i feel like it could have been 17 singles on here if this was like an old school album for some sure. of the shit that he could have just floated out there like fire I don't you know. even like ASAP. That nigga was ripping it on that money cash hoes. Nah, that's, that sounded good. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> I like that shit. That, that, I was like, yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Because I'm when I'm listening, I'm not looking at the titles of the songs. I'm just kind of letting it go. I'm doing some yeah. other shit. So I didn't even pay attention to the money cash clothes. I would have caught it. But Facts. when that came in, I was like, I was like hold on. <laughs> that motherfucker sound good, dude. And game is always high quality bars too, man. Yeah, yeah, you for mean- sure. Him and Ross, the last two niggas left, and Ross got more hiccups the game do, but Facts. in that age group, I love, like, just if they had, to, if you had to, who gonna make the best album with get y'all two months between them two, I'd love to see how that come out. Because well, them I, niggas can both go. Because that Ross last album wasn't nothing, though. What was Ross last album? Yeah, see, like, he tra- he's stretching it out to you. You're right. It game was, last oh. two products has been way better than Ross shit, but I just still feel like, I do still feel like, it, Six months from now, if Ross hit us with 14 straight through, I wouldn't be as shocked no. as I would like a T.I. or a mm. Jeezy or like any one of that, like two chains. I'd be surprised that at this point, even though these niggas can still rap. I just he ripped see. it too. Oh my god, okay, that's, I mean, a, that's you can't see hard. me shining. You need an optometrist, yeah. Like, that's all hard. Was ripping. That's always hard. I ain't gonna lie, he was ripping that. Hey, um, get, to a, get to a couple of joints that that, that kind of stood out to you. My favorite song on here, I think, is No Smoke at the Polo Lounge. Jeremiah was lacing that, 
Facts. I like that No Man Falls. Pusha T is another one that can put out high quality album at this Absolutely. age. Absolutely. Uh, but I like that No Man's Fall with Pusha T and Two Chains. The Black Slim is Shady is absolutely one of my favorite joints. Save the best for last with Ross <laughs> and that Universal Love. I usually I I am I I'm sleep on Chris Brown. I understand how talented he is, and I usually don't fuck with his th- songs. But I like the Universal Love. I like the bag the game was in on it. What he was talking about, like this fire. Those are the yeah. ones that stuck out to me though. What do you have? Yeah, uh, what stuck out to me, I, I like that start from scratch too. Um, I thought that was really, really dope. And surprisingly, I mean, I like the records that you named too. This is in addition to that. Um, surprisingly, I can't believe I'm saying this. That Nikki Beach with Tory Lanez and French Montana, that's I, I fuck with that. Like, I, and I can't believe I fuck with that. In the Lanes summer Lace. vacation, absolutely. Yeah. Sand but, in the feet in between that's exactly. the toes. Come yeah, on that, now. That. I, I actually that worked in my opinion. I was fucking with that, and that money cash clothes was hard too. I like that talk to me nice too, because Blast is undefeated on them hooks. I talked to um, nice, that nigga. That nigga's undefeated, and I like yes. I like the Tila flip too. That just sound good. Money bag ripped yeah. it. So. Me ripped it, and yeah, money bag ripped, ripped like everybody. Like, it was like niggas was like it was it was almost like game sent the memo. I was like niggas better bring their a game on my album because it wasn't nobody that was like off on their feature on here. I Nobody, agree. dude. Well, hold on. Nah, I ta- yeah, I mean, I I'm not even counting Blueface if you finna say him. But nah, his, that was actually <laughs> that's the best okay. way to have a Blueface feature, dude. Like that was yeah. actually cool. That I went mad at that. Five year verse was terrible though. Mm. It was terrible. Mm. And that, and you know, that's my boy. I fuck with him. He mailed that shit in though. And that, I get to my my weakness, my weakness, dude. Because that that song is some slaw for for drill really? beat. I mean, it's not. Let me take that back. It's not slaw. But for drill beat standards, that beat was was super mid. And I thought Fabio mailed it in. Once I listened back again, I was like, bro, this nigga mailed that verse in. And then Game was sounding like, um, he was trying to sound like Pop Smoke. So yeah. disrespectful. Man, uh, I feel like there was a recent Vice News still comes on. I didn't know that on Showtime. And they had a recent segment about the drill music shit and how it was impacting New York. I feel like Fabio may be trying to pull away. He ain't trying to get caught up in that. Cause I didn't realize it was like it was. Like it was. Yeah. Look at that. I sent you the, the link or whatever. That shit. Like they going. They going in in New York. I believe it. I believe but I like it. that. Uh, what didn't work for me, man? Hold on, I got two more. Hold on. Hold oh, on. My hold bad. on. Um, that that one. That one didn't work. The Kanye. The fortunate with Kanye and Dreezy. That that let me down. That let me down. I, I ain't gonna lie. Kanye sounded like he was freestyling. He was. I was like, bro, what is this? That shouldn't have made the album. And then the fact that the Nipsey record didn't get cleared last minute. I was expecting that. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to hear that. <laughs> I'm hot about I'm hot about that. I have been expecting it once you saw Wack start talking shit about Nipsey. You seen the whole thing that was going on, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, Wack has been talking shit about Nipsey since he passed, but I, I but game has not. No, game has about- showed the utmost respect. So I I you never know if Nipsey's brother was going to ride with the game side or now watch say, out who you in your album. Man. Wax still is. He know Wax still get money off it. That's nah, true. Fuck that nigga. That's what he looking at it like. I wouldn't release that shit either. That hurt though. Uh, especially with the shit that he was saying, man. That's some, that's some shit. Yeah. What didn't work for me, an hour and 52 minute album, man, is always going to be hard to digest, but I think he pulled it off <clears throat> good. The Chrome Slugs and Harmony was just okay. I was expecting a little bit more, even though I'm not a big G Herbo fan. Yeah, um, I ain't rip it though. He just had too much auto tune. Just had way too much auto tune. And the Kanye and Dreezy, because I'm a big fan of those. Got both of those too. Yeah. Um, and Ruby's Rose, Ruby's Rose. What? They didn't do nothing for me. You know, oh, I, you don't you like know how I feel about fast rap. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, just, yeah. That's fair. Yep, and the Drake with the braids in the loo, I feel like it's like a little, come on, bro, we ain't need that. I don't need Drake voicemail on your album, bro. You got 30 fire-ass songs, bro. Yeah. We know you cool with Drake, bro. Stop. Like, he nigga wasn't even saying nothing either. Yeah, that, I don't know what that was. He There's just, nothing revealing was in that voicemail, bro. I don't know what made you think. Drake oh, is shit. busy, bro. Okay. Hey, get, drop that Drake voicemail. Yeah, that one right there. Put that in here, like, midway through. Absolutely. Yeah, that. Yeah, get the fuck know. out of here. Cool. I'm cool off of that. But, hey man, can I see this voicemail so we can put it on the album? It's on my phone. Like, what? Hey, man, yeah. What? Think about it, man. It's too late, bro. We're going to turn it out, man, bro. Damn, man. It's already mix and master, bro. Sorry, man. My bad, bro. Everything else. I, w- I will yeah. say this, though. I was listening to, um because I was interested to hear what Young Boy was going to sound like on here. 
Mm-hmm. And I actually, I, I don't mind that song. I actually kind of like it. it. It gave me, and I'm seeing who produced it, which explains everything. Oh. Um, DJ Paul made it. Oh, and wow. I was, I was thinking to myself, this is a Memphis beat. Like it sounded like a three, six mafia beat. And I really wanted somebody else other than young boy. Like if you go go young, wild drill rap nigga, then he should have went like somebody from Memphis, maybe. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking NLE oh. Chopper. I, I was thinking somebody like him. What NLE uh, for? He from Memphis, ain't he? Yeah. No. I would have took somebody like that or, or mm-hmm. even, you ain't got to go to Memphis. I would have took like Polo G or something. I just don't like young boy just didn't do nothing for him. It was okay. He just didn't do nothing for me. Yeah. I think his, his boys just don't register for me. Yeah, it is. That, that shit. I like that voodoo though, with the little with the sample. I mean, Bang. with the little. I don't know what that. I don't know where that's from, but that's just. I, I like how it sounded though. That shit was dope. That's the person. That ain't the featured person singing it. The I, I, It sounded like a sample TV. though. Yeah, let me tell you what I really, really liked, and I got a lot from. Whenever I can learn something from listening to podcasts and music, the La La Land when he was going over the hats. Yeah, and- that was hard. Fire. Yeah, that was hard. That's the shit that I fucking love. When a nigga can bring you into the hood and tell you, hey, man, this, this over here and this, that over there. That was dope. all sound good still. That shit right there was fire. I need the video for that ASAP. That was dope. 100%. DJ Paul made that beat, too. Did he? Yeah. I got to get back into reading these credits, man. That shit crazy. Overall, man, what do you think about this album? What are you giving, gang? Um, I'm shockingly going to give it four reels. It's fire. Um, I say shockingly only because it's so easy to look at a double album, 30 track album and go, man, this would have been fire had he taken off and then fill in the like 10 songs. But I think it's fire even as is. Like this is really hard to do, man, with a double album, bro. Cause every double album that's ever came out, you could probably condense and make something better. But this was strong. Um, I give it to him. Uh, like, I'm not mad at this, man. Four reels on my end, what you think? I agree, man. This is a really, really strong project. I got to go four and a half. I couldn't give it five. I didn't think it was a classic, but I do think this is a very, very good product. What I appreciate the most about this listening to it and what we talk about here sometimes is like uh, people caring about the, what the music they put out and not just trying to put something out and get to the next bag, get to the next endorsement. This ain't that. This is high quality. I gave a fuck about all 30 of these songs, the placement, the impact, the features. I'm bringing skits back. Like, this is the type of rap that you and I grew up on. Yeah. Uh, and I and I appreciate it. Even if I don't appreciate Game's antics all the time or his personality, that nigga, get, he get in his bag when he gets in the booth. And I, I respect this shit out of that. So for what I have. I want to run back because it's been a while. I'm not going to lie. I want to run back that Born to Rap. I remember I had it. I think we both had it as our number one album that year. Sir. Um, Because uh, I can't remember where this compares to that. I w- I'm going to run that back probably later on this week. Um, But yeah, now nah, this album too. That had about 22 songs on it, if I can remember correctly. 25. Yeah, see, I was right there. Yeah, he emptying out the hard drive, man. But dude, dude catalog is crazy, though. We got to put some respect on game catalog. Facts. That is a fact. It, it can stand up to a lot of peoples. A hundred percent, man. Yeah, let, y'all let us know what y'all think about the Drillmatic album. Are we gassing it? Did you fuck with it? Did you not like it? Overrated, underrated? Talk to us. Leave a comment, youtube.com slash on deck TV. Let us know how you feel. Uh, sure. We got wins or losses, man. Um, w or L to your man, Rod Wave, who had a new project drop. He passed on the Drake Lemon Pepper Freestyle feature. Because he said he didn't like his verse. So he just said, Th- no thanks, Drake. I'm going to sit this one out, man. W or L. And he was on there crying, being all sad and shit. Drake was talking to big boy rich. I don't even know what you upset about bars. No, nah, you can't <laughs> get on this song, nigga. Yeah, of course you passed. That nigga probably got, he probably was so mad that he was in that depressed bag and Drake was on there popping that rich shit, man. So like, I get it. It's an L though. It's definitely yeah, No, L. it's definitely an L. I, I will say this though. It's a no, nah, it's ain't even that big of this is this is a kind of a tie. It's an L because that's a major opportunity. You would have been in front of a whole lot more people, but he ended up still being okay. He's carved out a nice lane for himself. But it's a W though to realize, like, yo, I ain't put my best shit out. And before me. I put some whack out, nigga, I ain't put nothing out. So I, I respect that. That makes Cause sense. Because having a bad verse on there might have hurt you more than just being on there. That's a fact, especially if you ain't no real barred up nigga. Like you uh, had to make up for that. I can't hear him on there anyway. That's true. Um, w or L, Megan Thee Stallion. She re- she also dropped this weekend. She revealed how much she paid for that future verse. A quarter million dollars, bro. 250 racks for that future verse. 
on her uh, something licious. What is that shit called? Freak of lit. That's uh, that's also slaw. Oh, uh, mm. WRL paying two fifty for the future verse. This a L because if you're gonna pay two fifty for the future verse, you got to know what to do with it. And they fumbled the bag. Like uh, I, you don't even know the name of the song. Oh, uh, pressure licious. That's just yeah. Small. You had to look it up. Like if yes. I got a future feature and we dropping two fifty, if I was Carl Crawford, I would be mad too. Cause I ain't heard nothing about this song and they performing well. There's a lot some some funny stuff going on over in Med Camp, man. It don't it don't look right to me. Something don't look right. Two fifty. Did you know this album was coming out? She announced it like Wednesday, Thursday. Like it was super last minute. Something fishy going on, bro. Yeah. Um, sound like some politics, man. W or right. L, last one. Kendrick Lamar, he gets a feature request from none other than Madonna. Big How you W's, feeling about that? Man. Big W's. Pop star white girls see Taylor Swift bumping uh backseat freestyle video. They love Kendrick Lamar, man. And this is continuing to expand his brand. It was a brand new commercial for that PS Lane. Did you see that? The yeah, the company, collab the he did with Cash Out. Did, did you see the commercial though? Yeah, I like it. That was fire. I like it. That shit was fire. If that's the type of the marketing they're gonna be doing, there's a dope, dope. That was creative. Man. Creative as hell. Uh, but yeah, this is a big win. Reasons being for the things that we've seen Kendrick do lately. So 100 percent What do you think? Uh yeah, that's a dub. Why not? That was that's probably a half a mil for that verse. <laughs> if future got 250, I'm charging that's... Madonna 500, bro. Man, well, at least a cool million. <laughs> cool million. Madonna? Come Let me on get with that. that. Would you? Uh... Reason, thank you. That's a fact, man. Let's go to uh, On Decker of the Week. It goes to our guy, Cotton. Shout out DJ Cotton, man. Hey, Cotton, man. He commented on the last Quick Hits episode and said, Charleston White is right. Oh, my God. I, I DJ Cotton and Charleston White, or they seem like they would be, he would be a fan of that guy. It sounds about right. He said, these rappers can't use the what about Arnold Schwarzenegger argument at all because their whole image is I'm really about that life. This Rico got them shook. He right about that though. Cotton got, he got a point. Listen, right. as Rico, the Rico Charles got him scared, as it should though. As it should though. Rico that got me scared. And I ain't got nothing to do with it. That ain't shit to play with, man. ESTG recent little thing. Did you see his thing on um? What's the name where they break down your lyrics? Genius. Yeah, and he was just saying like a, like saying spin the block meant. Oh yeah, we were spending playing basketball all day. That meant we spent the whole day just playing basketball and we was tired. <laughs> and we were down the court. It's just stuff like that. So he's the, I respect the shit out of it. So yes. Uh here's here's the thing about the comment, because I'm I'm indifferent about that. The, the key word in this was image. Mm. All of this shit is an image, bro. It's a brand. It, that, that, that's all this shit is, dude. Like, and so uh, and I think people understand that. News flash 21 Savage's real name is not 21 Savage, it's a stage name. Uh, <laughs> dude, oh, it's stop. not his actual name, bro. Like, this is all it's stop. everything is an image, everything is a brand. We're all old enough to know that it may fool some kids, but if you're past a certain age, then you should know this information and it shouldn't be a surprise to you. It's a lot of niggas out here that ain't past that age, man. That's, that's the, the, the same people that shooting up them parks that he talking about ain't past that age. That's true. So, so. Uh, what you got to put me on, man? My put on this week, man, I did not know that there were new episodes of Beavis and Butthead on Paramount Plus. Mm. Mike Dean or whatever the nigga name, the, Mike Judge, yep. the creator of it has a uh, brand new Mike Judge Presents versus MTV Presents Beavis and Butthead. And um, I looked at a couple of episodes on Paramount Plus this weekend. Still funny. Really? Not as funny as it used to be, like, when it was, like, newer and there wasn't as much edgy stuff out there. But right. it's still still some funny shit in there, man. So check out Beavis and Butthead on Paramount Plus. I used to be a big fan. And they've changed. They don't look at videos no more. They look at, uh, they watch YouTube. So it's oh, different hard. YouTube clips instead of videos. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's hard. That is. Um... What you got to put us on? Uh, two things in the end of a legendary run this week. Um, Better Call Saul ends this week. Oh my god! Series finale. I'm like two episodes behind, so I gotta hurry up and watch so I can watch the finale. But end of an era. This may be the last Breaking Bad universe show. Listen, crown them, crown the series, crown the whole universe. I'm and if anybody is wondering, am I here for a Gus prequel? Yes, I am. Sign me up. Mm. I'll take it. 
Um, but end of a end of an era, man, for that. And new TV show on Apple TV Plus. I talked about this in a group chat. I've got my little three month uh, free trial. That five days at Memorial is flames. What is that? Um, what is it about? It's about the Memorial Hospital in Katrina in New Orleans when the Katrina oh, flood hit. Oh. Uh, but it's a it's a it's not like a documentary. It's a scripted series. It's only five episodes. It's each episode is a day, but it's based on true events and it is flames. It's basically a a hospital drama mixed with a natural disaster movie and this shit works nigga it should have me locked in i guarantee you watch that first episode you're gonna run the second one you're gonna be like man, i saw me- that preview i like that apple got some good series man i, I see you, wait till you see that well you i think you're gonna like that c even though you're hesitant because you think it's like thrones that's that's something that you will fuck with just because of you like the cinematography shit so by yeah. it being that everyone in there is blind and just some of the approaches that they had to take on some of the visual shit is fire so i, I think you'll fuck with that once you look at a couple episodes too that yeah, Apple TV cooks facts. And it's um, like, I ain't gonna blow it for you, but go ahead. Yeah, don't blow it. If you, cause I'll check it out. If you watch the last, if you do watch that Five Days of Memorial, watch after the credits, fast forward through the credits and watch that. Cause they do about how to, how they made the episode. Mm-hmm. It's super dope. It's only like four or five minutes, but it show how they, everything is built. They recreated the hospital. They recreated, it's killing how they did it. So mm-hmm. if you're interested in that Hollywood movie making magic shit, then stay at the end of that, man. Check it out. Yeah. Um. Guys, hopping on that another- Game of Thrones brand new start this week. Nope. You can start from episode we're good. one. House of Dragons nope. starts the twenty first. Go on and hop down with the people, Animal Brown. No, thank you. No people are ready. No, nope. might as well go on and be there with us and all the way through. Nobody wants to see that bullshit. Um, that shit trash. Is waiting on that nigga. That House of Dragons is on the way. Oh, I got a music put on too, my guy. Uh, shout out FSP cameraman. Finesse two times, man. I've been bumping it since I seen his uh, freestyle that they dropped in the group chat, man. Mm-hmm. I, that that, that let, uh, back in specifically, but that finesse two times is banging. Brand new. I like I like that song banging. Thanks. Um, man, guys, appreciate y'all tapping in as always. Make sure you subscribe, leave comments on YouTube, Instagram, iTunes, all of that good shit. Anything else before we get out of here? No, that's it, man. We appreciate you guys supporting your deck TV show podcast. We here. Go grab you some merch. Yeah. Yes, sir.